Hi, I'm Nikhilesh. And I'm Kushal. We're the two broke scientists. I don't know about you, Kushal, but when I was a kid, I always wanted this helicopter to rotate as fast as possible. Really? I wanted mine to take the longest time. Hmm. Wouldn't it be great if we could somehow find a way to control the rate of rotation? That's precisely what we're going to do now. On today's episode, we tell you why the helicopter rotates and how to build the helicopter such that you can control the rate of rotation. And finally, we validate our hypothesis with some cool experiments and computer simulation. How does anything rotate? Simple, there has to be a torque acting on it. Obviously, something is creating a torque on the helicopter. But which part? To check this, we did a simple experiment with and without the wings. Another experiment we performed was to change the orientation of the wings. Clearly, the presence and orientation of the wings seem to influence this rotation. This paper helicopter is not the same as the traditional helicopter. Let's compare them. The paper helicopter only starts rotating after some delay, which is weird because in the traditional helicopter, the wings start rotating and then only after some time the helicopter takes off. So what's changing here? In the paper helicopter, air starts rushing towards it as it drops. But in a traditional helicopter, the blades push the air down. For rotation to start, a torque has to be present. The paper helicopter only interacts with the air around it. So, as the air meets the helicopter wings, it is redirected away from the body, causing a change in momentum. From Newton's third law, a force acts in the opposite direction and generates the torque. But up till now, we only have a hypothesis. And in science, a hypothesis always needs to be confirmed with studies. This torque acts on both wings and forms a couple about the central axis. The first step we took was to simulate the helicopter in something called as computational fluid dynamics. CFD is a tool that allows us to visualize the fluid flow around the body and the forces generated because of the fluid flow. Initially, the helicopter is enclosed in a volume of fluid. Let's take a closer look. As you zoom into the side profile and look at the velocity vectors, you see that as they approach the wing, they start moving to the side and try to flow around it. The same thing happens in the front view. Now let's look at the pressure on the helicopter. You see that at the junction between the wing and the body, a region of high pressure is formed and the other side has low pressure. This is what forms the couple. It seems like our intuition about the forces was right after all. For a complete dynamic study, we decided to perform experiments with two goals in mind. The first was to confirm that the pressure at the junction was what was causing the couple. The second was to understand how the different geometric parameters of the wing affected the vertical and angular velocity of the helicopter. The system dynamics can be geometrically characterized by the length and width of the blade through the aspect ratio. Two cameras were used, one for the top view to measure the rotation rate and one from the front to measure the vertical velocity. To achieve our first objective, we made a hole in the junction and expected the helicopter to stop rotating. Boy oh boy were we wrong. The helicopter still rotated. We then realized that the blades were not completely orthogonal and the pressure over the wings still contributed to a couple. Making a hole in the wing as well completely stopped the rotation. This still validated our initial hypothesis of course, but with a slight modification. Now it was time to check out the second objective. As we kept decreasing the aspect ratio, the angular velocity increased. This was observed for all the configurations, where the angular velocity first increased almost linearly and then remained constant for the whole flight. You can see this clearly in the slow motion videos. Decreasing the aspect ratio increases the speed of rotation just like an ice skater when she tucks her arm in. We told you that the behavior of this is different from a traditional helicopter. But if you consider a helicopter whose engine fails, it doesn't start falling rapidly, but instead glides down in a maneuver called auto rotation. The paper helicopter we just showed you is an example of auto rotation. This concept is well explained by Destin in Smarter Every Day. That brings us to the end of our episode. Thanks for watching and hopefully you now know how to make a better paper helicopter. If you have any suggestions, don't forget to leave a comment below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye.